Made in New Orleans is underwritten by Art Plus Design Magazine, New Orleans Auction Galleries, and New Orleans Living Magazine. Hi folks, I'm Steve Martin and welcome to Made in New Orleans. Tonight we'll visit with artist Tony Mose and later we'll talk with Octavia Art Gallery owner Pamela Bryan. But first we went down to Tony's studio and gallery on Magazine Street to watch him work. So take a look at this. The decision to uh, become a full-time artist is, 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 was a major step for me. I was um, always, you know, 40-hour um, job, guaranteed insurance, that kind of thing. And I, I think we all get kind of almost wrapped up into that way of living. But it, it's not that it's a bad way, but it's actually, um, if, you're, if you're an artist and have that, that emotion and feeling in you, it can sometimes hold you back a bit. But when I decided to take the plunge, as I like to call it, um, it, 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 it really freed me and it allowed me to, to see things um, somewhat a bit different, but also appreciate life a little bit more because I knew God had, had given me this and I was able to take advantage of it. You know, I don't have a number two brush, and I don't have, um, you know, a yellow ochre in a tube that's, you know, $85. I, I really don't have that. What I do have, though, is a stick from outside, and I do have um, a, a piece of cloth, or I, I do have um, an old door, or whatever it is. You know, uh, art is something that you really have to believe first in yourself, and then what you do is you go out and you find things to make it come true. Okay, I take what's around me and I really create and, and, and make it happen. I just put it down. You have to put something down in order for you to take away. And what you take away is hopefully a feeling and a memory. And we call these things paintings. I know my paintings are not for, let's just say everyone, but know that when I cut myself, I bleed red. And I know when you cut yours, you bleed red. So that's that common thread that we all carry together. And if you just give it a chance, you may understand and recognize something that I tried to bring out. A lot of times when you um, have paintings hanging um, in your studio, your gallery, wherever, and, and someone walks in and they'll, they'll look at it and they'll say, you know what, it looks like Uncle John, okay? And your intention was, it was the best portrait you ever did of Michael Jackson. And you want to say, wait a second, that's Michael Jackson. But you have to realize that your job is done. You as an artist have completed your job. It's hanging, it's dry, and it's up to the viewer and, and the people to in, and in the world to enjoy it and to make their own um, um, ideas about what it is. So um, always remember that when a painting is, is complete in your mind's eye, you, you, you have to let them go. You really do because um, your your feelings are expressed in, in this, this flat surface and those feelings are gonna bounce off to someone else who's walked in and have, have a, a whole 
different mindset of, of what's actually going on. And that's okay, you know, it, and that's what art is. want people to come and see what I do and say, hey, wait a second, I know what's going on. I've done that before, you know? It's really um, a compliment when people can stand in front of a painting or a creation that you've done and actually a real emotion comes out, you know, whether that be you know, a tear or laughter or, or whatever that is. Um, trying to convey that is, is it's so important in painting. It's not easy, it didn't come overnight, and I consider it a blessing, and I use it every single day and every chance I get. And now we're back, and we're joined by Tony Mose. Tony, thanks for coming in. Hey, Steve, thanks a lot, bud. Good thanks for having me. You bet. Um, Let's get started with uh, how you started in art. Give us a little bit about your background, where you were born, where you were raised. Well, I'm from Avalos Parish, okay. a little town called Cottonport, Louisiana. I know that. And, um, which is 10 miles from Bunky, where my wife lives, right. uh, was grown up. Um, I, was, I was raised in Tioga, which is just on the other side of the uh, Alexander. Yeah, 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 basically neighbors, yeah. 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 And um, just, you know, went through, you know, um, elementary and high school and that kind of thing, but always had that little, you know, you need something drawn, you ask Tony or you know, yeah, this and that. Yeah, it's the thing they yeah. do in the country. And my father was naturally very creative and my mom was always, hey, that's great, that's pretty, you know, that right. looks good or whatever. And I've always um, just had that, that little feeling but never really pursued it, you know, never thought about it as a career. Right. Um, just kind of did my own thing with it. So at what point in time did you decide to actually pursue art? Well, when I, I went to college and, you know, at the time it was way back in, in um, when computers were coming up and I was thinking about maybe computer science or whatever, and then uh, took a couple art classes, um, art one and drawing and painting, you know, and that kind of thing, and realized that, you know, the teachers said, you know, hey, this guy, you know, he's really... And all that stuff you did as a child kind of came back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it, well, it was, it was, it came easy for me to just you know, see something and put it on paper, you right. know, and, and that kind of thing. And, but they saw, you know, they saw the potential or whatever. And, and I was thinking about art therapy for a while and, and moving in that direction, but life took over right. and we moved to Alexandria, actually right. kind of close to where you're from. Um, and, um, you know, retail managers and, and everything else. And, and, but always, no matter where I was, I had an extra room or wherever, there was a little, little, little place for the art. You know, right. the paintings were up and this and that and friends and family, that kind of thing. I understand, very similar yeah. story with me. Um, well, why don't you tell me, you know, a lot of people can see artists um, when they're in their galleries or, w or their work up on a wall, but why don't you give us an insight into a day of Tony Moe's? You know, you go get your coffee and how does it go from there? Yeah, well, it's normally um, 4 5 o'clock, real early, and um, I get up and I'm looking, I'm surrounded by my work because I, I sleep in my gallery. So come 5.30 or whatever, I'm going to the coffee shop, getting the coffee, and I I look around, I, I go to Pinterest, I go, you know, the internet, I go everywhere, I'm, I'm searching, you know, and then around 7.30, 8 o'clock sometimes, I'll, I'll find myself down Julia Street, you know, where your place is and, 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 and the other guys. And I uh, park my truck and get out and I go window, you know, and I look. And, and, I, and I'm amazed at the work, you right. know, um, the finished work. And I, you know, sometimes when you get caught in your own little world, you think um, you may be a big fish, you right. know, and then all of a sudden you, you get out of the pond and then you you realize that there's bigger fish right next to you. And when I see the bigger fish, I, I, I'm i extremely envious, you know, not only the um, acclimates and everything else that goes with it, but the the time spent and put into the work. And that's what I strive for now. I, I think as, as opposed to the earlier work, um, not, not, you know, not that it was bad or whatever, but now I'm, I'm spending more time on, on pieces as opposed to, you know, um, just being content and happy with, right. with what's going on. Right. Everybody that we've had on the show, we've uh, seen a little bit into their world and, and what the common thing that seems to emerge is everybody is passionate about what they do. It's a lifestyle, 
and they're completely immersed in it. I mean, you start at 4.30 in the morning and it's art until you probably go to sleep. Right. So um, tell us about that you know, experience in the gallery for, uh, for a client that would come in. Sometimes they're intimidated by the white walls. How do you, how do you approach them because they're actually coming into your home in yeah, a way. Yeah, uh, well, you know, um, you have to remember that, like you just said, they are work walking into your house, and it's your job to make them feel comfortable. And, and you know, a lot of times, we're not always on our A game, you know, and we always want to be on our A game, you know, especially if someone's coming in and visiting or whatever. But um, you, you have to remember that it's, it's, it's your job, you know, that's part of it. It, it. It's not just being a painter or, you know, whatever you are. It, it, you have to be the businessman also. You have to make them feel comfortable right. and you have to pick up um, their signals, you know, if they need help, you know, as far as um, explaining a painting or, or you, you see the interest with them, you know, really studying a piece and then you ask the question, are you a painter? perhaps you know do you is your mom a painter and and then you see that response and they're like oh god yeah now I can feel better hey Tony I'm you know I'm Diane you know right. blah 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 and then you it, the conversation and you, the relationship is built and that's how you build them right when you're talking about the work and and you uh, have taken your ideas and you've used them to um, infuse that canvas with Tony Mose but you've been influenced by other artists along the way that helped you develop who Tony Mose is as a painter. Right. So um, do you talk about that with the client as at what your influences were and how they can see pieces and parts of this, but how you've made it your own? Well, a lot of times they'll walk in and they'll reference, and you know, um, if you're not in the art world, you know basically who, you know, Van Gogh is, you know, and, and so someone will walk in and they'll say, oh, that looks like Van Gogh, you know, and. And I'll say, well, thank you very much, you know, because Van Gogh is pretty good, right. you know, and and you have to to, to to understand that that's all they've seen, maybe, yeah, that's you know, their point of yeah, reference. that's their point of reference. And so what you do is you explain that you use strokes like Van Gogh and you use colors like Van Gogh, but the piece that's actually on the wall is Tony Moe's, right. you know, and that's what they're responding to, and it 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 it, it it's not so hard when you are in a comfortable place. Mm -hmm. And I, when I say comfortable place, I'm talking about your inner, who you are. You know, God has blessed me, and he really has, mm -hmm. and, and I know that. You know, I have my beautiful wife, and I get to do what I love for a living. You know, That's and, a blessing, and, yeah. and it, 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 it's absolutely one of the things that, that I'm, I'm so appreciative of. Right, in the gallery, um, you have a wide range of work on the wall. You work in, in painting mainly, but you do sculpt and you add elements to your surfaces. Give us that media range, um, you know, abstract to figurative and, and, and in between. Tell us, tell us that story and that journey. Yeah, well, um, what happens is, you know, I, my particular route, okay, and it's not for everybody, but it's just how I see it and feel it. Um, I'm going to draw today. Mm -hmm. And I'll put my pencils down, and then tomorrow I'm going to uh, play with some wood, you know, and then the next day I'm thinking about the drawings in the wood, and then I'm putting the two together. Right. Okay, and whether it be collage or metal, or it, it doesn't really matter for me. Um, it's it's in me, and it's breathing, mm -hmm. and, and it, it's like the air, you know. Um, it just so happens that everyone or most people that know me know me for paintings, and which is fine, and I understand that, and that's probably, you know, a good part yeah, of my living, thing, yeah. but um, if I didn't have the the other things, the wood and the, and the metal or whatever, I would. I don't think I would be who I am, you know, um, right. because... One, one thing kind of that you pick up is you, you find something in everything that you do that drives you to the next thing. It's discovery. It's yeah, the process yeah, of yeah, discovery. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, um, and it's like when you're walking down the street and you trip in a hole, Yeah. And now you know the hole's there, okay? So you can do two things. You can step back in it, or you can walk around it, okay? But it's not so bad sometimes to step back in it, okay? And that understanding that if you do something and you fail, it may be a good thing, because when you fall in that hole the second time, it may be your spouse walking down the street helping to pick you up, mm -hmm. and you just met her, and that's 
that's that connection. Right. You know, um, God won't put anything in your way that you can't handle. Right. I really believe that, and He'll give it to you when you need it. And believe that. I mean, you have to really believe. And when you believe in things like that are bigger than you, you become bigger than who you think you could ever have. Yeah, you grow. Been. You grow from your experiences. Yeah. You have two locations. You have one in Baton Rouge and one in, in uh, New Orleans on Magazine Street. Mm -hmm. How do you split your time, and, and then how do you find your your work, um, not your artwork, but the work of the gallery, different from one place to the other? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Baton Rouge, I have a big warehouse that I work out of. Um, I've been there for 14 years, and um, it's 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 crazy. You know, it's big, and it's 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 every it, what you dream of as far as having an art place to work. Um, and then here in New Orleans, I'm in a little, uh, you, you've seen it, yeah. uh, a little bitty small space, and, um, and it, it's just a different dynamic. But um, when I, I'm able to um, separate it, because um, it's always in me, and when I need to do something bigger, I have the place to do it, and when I need something smaller, I, I always have the place to do it. Um, Baton Rouge, um, I'm there on uh, Mondays, mm -hmm. and I deal with, it, with with all you know what goes on there, or whatever. And then uh, Tuesday through Saturday, I'm back here um, in in New Orleans and, and doing the thing over here, and actually living here. And my wife comes meet me on the weekends. Okay, yeah. so so the New Orleans gallery is more of a gallery, where Baton Rouge is more of a studio, but right. both are accessible. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, tell us a little bit about the studio uh, when you're when you're there working. Uh, how do you uh, use that large space? How, did, how does that work? Well, um, volume allows you your mind to, to grow, mm -hmm. I think, and when you have space, you can think about bigger things. And, you know, when I'm in that small, smaller space, I'm, I'm very focused. I, you know, I don't, I don't really need light. I don't think about things like that. I'm looking just at the canvas. And when I'm in the studio space, well, I'm able to do and throw around and, and just to really let go, yeah. Right. What, what's your favorite, uh, like I said before, you have kind of a wide range. You do abstract and you do collage uh, assemblies and you do the figurative paintings. What's your favorite thing to work on and why? Um, I think figurative, you know, um, faces, you know, because it's you can always reference it, you know, as far as um, you, I know what a person looks like, I know what eyes look like and ears, I know where they go, and I can play with it, push it, or I can pull back, I can make it as realistic as I want or as abstract, mm -hmm. so I can put it all together like that. But um, the, act, the the hardest thing to do is the non-objective abstract stuff, which is what people think is the easiest, but it actually comes from inside. Mm -hmm. um, I, you know, personally in my home, I have the big abstract stuff, and, and you know, and that's what I, I enjoy having around me. But um, as far as every day, I'll sit down and draw faces all day. Yeah. Gotcha. Tell us how people get, get, can get in touch with you the best way in, in Baton Rouge, what's your location, and are people welcome to come by there? Um, well, not in Baton Rouge that much, but uh, okay. what you can do is you can reach me at uh, here on Magazine Street, 3935 mm -hmm. Magazine. I'm next to uh, the White uh, Camellia, mm -hmm. um, and my phone number is 225-202-6406. How about a website? Do you have uh, mm -hmm. work that people can see there? Yeah, it's uh, esomart.com. Okay. Well, Tony, I really appreciate you coming in today. It's been a pleasure. I've, I've enjoyed talking with you over time, and I'm sure the people that watch the show tonight really enjoyed it, too. Thank you so much, Steve. Yeah. I appreciate it. All right. We'll be right back with more Made in New Orleans. You're watching WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. Find us on Cox Channel 14, Charter Channel 11 and 711, AT&T Channel 32 and 1032, Dish TV, Direct TV, and Over the Air Broadcast on Channel 32. Welcome back. We're here with Pamela Bryan from Octavia Art Gallery. Pamela, thank you for coming in today. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Pamela, tell us a little bit about how you got into the gallery business. Well, I've always enjoyed the liberal arts tremendously, whether it was writers, musicians, artists. I have a background in business as well as the liberal arts, and I went back and got my master's in art history at Tulane University and decided to open up an art gallery really after Katrina. I felt that um, 
an art gallery would be a place where people could go and it could be somewhat like a sanctuary where it could lift their spirits, um, they could look at visually pleasing um, pieces of art and, and take them away from um, post-Katrina in New Orleans. And so we opened up the gallery in the beginning of 2008 and we were startled at, at uh, the response in New Orleans. Well, you were doing some very unique things. You had collaborative shows, you had the Andy Warhol uh, exhibit where, where artists that were influenced or had similarities. Yes, yes. Um, we believe that the artists here in New Orleans have such tremendous talent that it's fun for us to couple them with the modern masters. Um, say someone like Jeffrey Pitt, um, his work has been compared to Keith Haring mm -hmm. many, many times. And uh, we were comparing Ashley Longshore to, to Andy Warhol. And I think it's nice because the client can understand where the emerging artist is, um, is where their mindset is and, and what is an inspiration to them. And um, at the same time, we are bringing some of the greatest pop art, um, the greatest mo modern masters of pop art to New Orleans as well. Um, I frequent New York City um, on a uh, monthly basis weaving in and out of many of the galleries in, in New York, looking at uh, what type of art they're selling, looking at their emerging artists, looking at, at how they couple. Um, and that uh, helps you, that informs you on how you would like to present artists in that venue and then their artists back here? Absolutely. Uh, we, we did the Living With Pop show in August of 2012 at the Octavia Gallery. Um, combining emerging artists with pop artists. Um, the Metropolitan uh, Museum of Art did the exact same idea of the exhibit in the fall of 2012. So I knew that this marketing strategy was, was really a very good one. And um, it really does bring out the caliber of, of the art that we have here in New Orleans and what is being created. Um, that is, that's, really one of my number one motives behind beginning the art gallery was to promote um, the artists that we have here because traveling around the world, going in and out of galleries, I will say to another gallerist in, in, in Milan or Paris that I have a gallery in New Orleans and the reaction is always the same, oh I love New Orleans. Well would any of your artists ever want to be represented in New Orleans? Absolutely, we have no representation in New Orleans. Right. We would love some type of representation here. Who, who are some of those artists? What have you been able to put that together? Yes, I have. Um, uh, Joe Zamet Lucia is a um, internationally recognized photographer who has um, been on permanent exhibition at the Museum of Natural History in Paris, and he is shown at the United Nations. We've been able to sell his photographs of of kind of the personal human emotion associated with animals uh, and been very, very successful. Now, you, you also work with Cuban artists a lot? We do, we do. Part of our mission is to go into different areas of the world and find what is authentic, what is real in that particular country or city and bring that back to New Orleans where we feel is one of the most authentic and real cities right. in the, in the in America, and showcase um, these artists. And I have been traveling to Havana for the past couple of years, um, several times during the year, uh, creating relationships with artists in Cuba, trying to identify um, what is kind of the Cuban art scene and bringing it back to New Orleans. Uh, there are many emerging artists that we are. Um, creating relationships with, and they all have a particular style. Many of them are graduates of the International School of Arts, ISA, in Havana, which is an excellent, excellent art school that trains the artists classically, and and their color combinations are, are quite unique. Um, I think their interpretations of um, abstract expressionism is, is um, very, very interesting, and they're taking lots of risks. Mm -hmm. So. It's a 45-minute flight from Miami. It's so close, but it's a 
different world. Right. And uh, and we usually do a, uh, one or two shows every year um, with our Cuban artists. And we hope to get into Morocco right. and Istanbul. We hope we hope to um, get into more into Africa as well. Okay. Well, there's a really exciting thing that's happened. You've moved. You're no longer yes. on Magazine Street. You're down in the Arts District. Uh, yes. Brand new, beautiful space. Yes. Uh, who are you currently showing? Well, currently on exhibit we have Regina Scully, who is a local artist. Uh, Regina graduated from the Rhode Island School of Design and got her master's at the University of New Orleans. Um, she is exactly the type of artist that we love to exhibit because she's got tremendous talent. Uh, Microsoft has purchased a number of her pieces. Um, she's in quite a number of no notable collections. And um, she has exhibited in New York, she's exhibiting in Geneva, and uh, we see her, her um, career really beginning to just explode. And to have a local artist such as, as Regina, who, uh, whose work really does um, bring to mind many of the, of the great um, masters um, in early 21st century. She exudes that type of, uh, of feeling of being situated here in New Orleans, learning from the uh, relationships she has with other artists, but going into her particular style and focusing on these urban dense scenes that have just so much interpretation and so much uh, information to to sh to show the the viewer and right. the client. Is there uh, a, a kind of a quick list of artists that you're, you're representing right now that you want to share and and maybe some excitement in, 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 in your mind of upcoming shows that might be? Sure. In our roster, in our program, we have over 50 percent with New Orleans artists. And our next couple of shows will be both very local and regional artists. Um, Jeffrey Pitt, mm -hmm. who uh, yeah, just is um, a local artist we will have in March. Um, Nall, who is located in Fairhope, Alabama, but also Vence, France. Um, will be in April, and Michelle Verisco, who does um, fantastic aerial photographs um, of our receding wetlands, will be in May. So um, we have a, a nice roster of local um, artists coming up um, for the spring, and then we'll be doing some group shows during the summer, and um, a big um, show for White Linen Night um, with uh, John Scott's son, Io Scott, and James Henderson, who's a local artist as well. So uh, we really are focusing on our local talent and getting their names, getting their artwork out there. So I do hope that people will come by and see our new space. It's 2,600 square feet of, um, of a beautiful art gallery space. And, 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 a, and a great question here is where where exactly so they it's on the corner of Julia and magazine so it's a just a perfect location it's just a, a great venue f to display the fantastic art that New Orleans has to it, offer it's a beautiful space if people wanted to see uh, more online what's your website it's www.octaviaartgallery.com all right Pamela, thank you so much for coming in tonight. It's It's been a pleasure. I'm sure everybody's going to want to rush down there. I, I go by all the time, so <laughs> I, I get to enjoy you almost every day. Well, I appreciate you having me so much, You're and welcome. it's been a pleasure. You're welcome. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with more Made in New Orleans. We're local and entertaining. WLAE, New Orleans Public Television. that's all the time we have for tonight. Please remember to support the arts and until next time, I'm Steve Martin for Made in New Orleans. Made in New Orleans is underwritten by Art Plus Design Magazine, New Orleans Auction Galleries, and New Orleans Living Magazine.